Hello friends, uh, we are now in chapter 5 and we are now going to look at uh, uh, extension of our study in dynamics. Previously in chapter 4, we studied the 3 Newton's law and also we kind of like understand, okay, there are this, there's this physical quantity called forces. It's a vector, it's um, guided by 3 of Newton's law. But now we're going to look at the type of forces and what are the other effects um, that happens when you apply a force on an object, all right? So the study of dynamics basically is a study on the uh, properties and also the description of forces, how they act and how they affect motion, okay? And here, this chapter, we're going to study more about forces, mainly the types of forces. And the main focus of this chapter is equilibrium, lah, right? So we're going to study the types of forces and the effect of forces, mainly causing object to accelerate, to turn, and sometimes to apply pressure. So we'll go through them one by one by first looking at the type of forces. The first type of forces that we will look at is the non-contact force, which is force that can exist without touching something. Okay, so examples for this is gravitational force. Okay, and there are three types of force. The first one is gravitational force or weight. So if you think about weight, right, weight can exist on its own. Let's say, for example, I were to drop something. So if I drop this marker pen, I release, uh, weight will pull it down. This marker pen doesn't have to be touching earth for weight to act on it, right? So this is what I mean by non-contact. You don't have to touch. For example, magnets are also non-contact. Uh, two magnetic objects will attract each other. There will be a magnetic force, although the magnets are not touching each other. So this kind of forces where you don't really need to touch is what we call field forces or non-contact force. The first one will be gravitational force or weight represented by the symbol Fg or W, which is a force on a mass in a gravitational field. So these lines are gravitational field lines, which we draw to represent the direction of the force. To find magnitude, we will multiply m with gravitational field strength g, for Earth is 9.81, and it has to be directed to the center of the Earth, making it normal to the surface of the Earth. So if, let's say, I zoom in and look at a, a thing in a normal day-to-day -day scale, uh, mg or weight will be directed vertically downwards because it has to be perpendicular to the Earth's surface, okay, as labeled in the diagram. As usual, you can find these notes in your OneNote content library. So it has to be perpendicular to the Earth's surface, right? And the second type, the second type of field force or non-contact force is electric force represented by Fe, which is a force on a positive charge in an electric field because positive is our reference charge. So all the arrows you see are electric field lines, which we will study a lot more in AS and A2. So in AS, we will only look at it in chapter 17 after your semester exam. All right, so the gravitational field lines actually show the direction of forces. Okay, so uh, if you look at this diagram, because it's an electron, so the direction of force is actually against the direction of the field lines. All right, again, more on this data. And the final force that I will just tell you about, which is magnetic force, this is deep, deep into A2. Semester 3, we will look at magnetic fields. Okay, so all this, I, uh, you're interested, you go and look at the diagram. Lah. So I'm going to focus or draw your focus to the contact forces, which are forces that only exist when surface touch each other, okay, which is our main focus in chapter 5 in this part of your study of physics. So the first force that we will talk about is the normal force or the reaction force, which you should be aware exists whenever there are two surfaces which are in contact with each other. And it has to be normal or perpendicular to the contact surface. For example, M1 is touching the inclined plane, so there is a normal force that is normal to the inclined plane. And M2 is not touching the inclined plane, so there is no normal force. So you just need to say, are the surface touching? If they are, there will be a normal force. Okay. And the fifth force is frictional force, normal, normally lowercase f. Again, two surfaces have to be in contact. If not, they cannot rub against each other. And it has to be parallel to the contact surface and going against the motion. So for example, if M2 is falling, meaning M2 is, M1 is going up the inclined plane. Okay, so if M2 is falling, M1 is going up the inclined plane. And if M1 is going up the inclined plane, friction will oppose motion and friction will act down the inclined plane. Like this. Alright? <coughs> so to decide which direction of friction is, decide where the object is moving. There's other type of friction or resistive forces that you already know about in Chapter 4, which is what I call drag force or FD. Just a big reminder, drag force exists because of collision with air particles as you travel. And uh, the drag force is prop uh, proportional to the velocity squared, which can be included as well, right? So it's kind of like the same class, uh, which is friction. The next type will be tension. 
And this tension will be in the stretch rope or string or in a compressed spring. Okay, it's for pulling only. You cannot use a rope to push. That is not possible. Okay, so you can see I've labeled T1 and T2 on the diagram here and here. Okay, and same rope should have the same tension because of Newton's third law. The next one, which is Boolean force. If you want to look at Boolean force, right? Boolean force is a force on an object that is fully or partially submerged in a fluid. Okay, and we can apply Archimedes principle. And we will look at this in another subtopic, just to remind you there's this thing called Boolean force. Any kind of object that displaces a fluid, the pressure difference between the top and the bottom will help buoy, buoyant, okay? Will help uplift or uptrust the object. All right, so this one will be another subtopic. So this is just uh, to give you an overview about the different type of forces that's important to you right now at this point of time in your syllabus. All right, so I think Archimedes, you know already, right? The person, the floating forces you feel when you're in water. All right, I want to focus more on the inclined plane in this particular video because it's a very famous physics example because it teaches you how to draw and label forces. Okay, because if you don't draw and label force, you can't use your Newton's second law. Okay, so for example, if V is constant, okay, I am going to consider the forces acting only on M2 first. So I can use F is equal to MA, Newton's second law just on m2 alone so from here i get net force is zero and t2 will be equal to w2 all right so let me pause that so that you can look at it again okay so from here right you can see the net force is zero so t2 will be equal to w2 because I'm going to take the direction because I'm totaling up the forces. Ma. So I will take the downward force and the upward force. And since the direction of this one is zero, la, so I can say the forces will balance each other. This is actually an example of equilibrium. All right. But also logic, la, no acceleration. Ma. V is constant. So this A, this black arrow here will be zero. Now, if this A is zero, then the upward force will be equal to the downward force. La. Okay. And the second equation that we can do is with respect to this uh, inclined plane. Uh. Okay, now the problem with the inclined plane is the forces are neither horizontal nor vertical. But we can take direction parallel to the inclined plane because that makes more sense. You already have forces that are parallel and vertical to the inclined plane. So here what I'm actually doing is I'm resolving the W1 or the M1G. So this angle is 30 degree. Okay, meaning this angle will also be 30 degree. Later I will explain again if you need it so if i resolve this will be mg sine theta and the one beside the angle will be mg cos theta again velocity is constant so the forces will balance out so up the incline will be equal to down the incline so up the incline that's t1 and down the incline will be mg sine 30 plus f okay perpendicularly up the incline is n down the incline is mg cos 30 so that is how you can write equations but make sure you can draw the diagrams first. Lah. So here I'm going to talk about an inclined plane question and I'll provide you with some values. It is the exact same diagram. Okay, The only difference here is now um, I have the block M1 sliding up the incline at the acceleration of 0 0.5 meter per second square. So this is because M2 4 kg has enough weight to pull the entire system such that M1 will rise and M2 will fall. Okay. So I'm just going to draw the arrow for acceleration simply because this is important for us to decide which direction to take positive. I normally suggest that you take the direction of A as positive. Huh? That way it saves you some headache. Okay, so I've labeled the forces. Once again, weight is uh, 90 degree vertically downwards. Tension T1 and T2 is parallel to the string and only for pulling. That's why this T1 will pull M1 and this T2 will pull M2. Friction will oppose motion. If M1 is accelerating upwards, so friction has to be downwards, so this is not a problem. And normal has to be 90 degree to the contact surface. So first order of business, I've given you the mass of M1 and M2 respectively. I'm going to use net force is equal to MA, but first I'm going to substitute. Like, this will be 1G and this will be 4G. Okay, of course you can use your, you can multiply, like, but I'm keeping it as G first. So now I'm going to use net force equal MA on M2 alone, which I draw in the dotted line boxes. And here I will have T2 minus 4G is equal to 4 times 0 0.5. Okay, so the reason why 
I took T2 minus 4G is, let's say I use convention, which is up is positive and down is negative. So T2 minus 4G will be equal to MA. The mass of M2 is 4 kg, substitute with the acceleration 0 0.5. But be aware, if M1 is sliding up, then M2 is falling down. If M2 is falling down, acceleration is downward, 0 0.5 must be negative. If not, your answer is wrong. All right. So this is what I mean by try to take A as positive. Lah. Then you won't have this headache. You won't forget. All right. So that's how you get your T2. Okay. And T1 will be equal to T2 thanks to Newton's third law. All right. So you might be wondering, Miss, 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 wait, 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 wait. I see T1, T2, same magnitude, opposite direction, can. Where is the two other uh, condition? Well, tension is the same type of force. So that one is settled already. And the two, the two different body is like this. T1... Actually, right, there are a few forces here. T1 will pull M1. And M1 will pull back T1. There is another reaction force here that we, that we don't draw because it is the reaction forces where my arrow is right now. Uh. It's the reaction force on the rope. And we don't care about the rope. We care about the masses. Okay, the rope is just there. All right. Or you could think about the action-reaction pair. Lah. They are acting on different bodies. T1 technically is acting on M1. T2 technically is acting on M2. So it works. Kind of. All right. That's the slightly shortcut way. But anyway, you can take same rope, same tension. And these are all vectors, lah, the yellow color one. That's why you must make sure that they are parallel. This one, everything here is parallel. And remember to account for the positive and negative sign if the direction is reversed. I'm going to now apply net force is equal to ma once again on m1 so if i look at m1 right i mean if you cannot see you rotate the paper lah. the direction of a i will take as positive so t1 will be positive and f will be negative okay and uh i'm going to resolve g okay so i'm going to split g you see uh this one is 90 degree here because g is vertically downward ma. so you can see there's a right angle triangle here meaning to say this one will be 60 degree now, if this one is 60 degree, and there's another 90 degree here, right? So the other part will be 30 low, okay, mo. So this is what I mean by this angle will transfer to here. Now, if I resolve G, I will get Mg cos 30 and Mg sin 30. Mg sin 30 will be down the inclined plane. So I'm going to just take all the vectors that are parallel to A. Miss the 90 degree one, eh? the normal force, eh? don't care. It doesn't affect like projectile. Okay, so if we take horizontal component, we are not going to care about the acceleration in the vertical direction. If we take vertical component, we don't really care about the acceleration in the horizontal component, vice versa. So right now, we are only going to take uh, forces that are parallel to A. So this will be T1, positive and same direction, minus Mg sine 30 minus F. Okay, so we're going to have that there. And this will be equal to Ma. So, uh, I mean, from here, I know T1. I can substitute mg is 1g, sin 30 is half, the mass is 1, acceleration is 0 0.5 because we decided to take direction of A as positive. Here, I will get F, 31.835. Miss why you take so many as F, you wait, because later I want to show you some other things. So, bonus. Uh, if, let's say, they ask you to find the normal force between m1 and the inclined plane, you can use the equation uh, n is equal to mg cos 30, and you can just substitute law, 1, uh, 9.81, then you can put cos 30, la, okay? So all of this is just uh, inconsequential stuff in case they want you to find, all right? So next part, maybe you would like to check your working, all right? So in order to check your working, right, we will take net force is equal to MA, okay? But now I'm going to use on both M1 and M2. So the first idea, if let's say you cannot visualize how to do this force because so many force, uh, how you, how, uh, is to straighten the diagram. So I'm going to straighten the rope such that M1, M2 is one line. Then you see that actually when everything is one line, it's easy to use F equal to MA. All right. So first, if this is straightened and T2 is pointing to the left, then 4G will be pointing to the right, which is the first thing I will draw. This is 4G. Okay, and acceleration will be towards the right. Of course, on the other side here, once you straighten already, G sine 30 is parallel to T1. So you can see G sine 30 here parallel to T1 and opposite direction, followed by friction, F. So I use net force equal to MA all over again. And 4G plus T1 minus T2 minus G sine 30 minus F is equal to MA. 
But now, because I am treating M1 and M2 together, so basically uh, Newton's second law is very versatile. As long as you choose your system, your system can be just M1, it can be just M2, it can be both M1 and M2, doesn't matter, as long as you treat the forces appropriately. So this is why I add up M1 plus M2, because I'm considering all the forces on M1 and M2. And here, I can cancel off my tension because T1 equal to T2. And some of you might be thinking, oh, miss, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. 4G minus G sine 30. Uh. So I get 3G sine 30 is half. <coughs> so you see, uh, mass I add, uh, 1 plus 4 kg. If this is you, you need to do a bit more maths. Law. Where can I like that one? Please don't. Uh, I see so many times. I mark so many people. Yeah. So my suggestion is either you press 1 by 1 or, <coughs> excuse me, you... Factorize the G, all right? So factorizing the G, I will get 4 minus sine 30, which is half, minus F will be equal to 1 plus 4, A. And A happens to be 0 0.5. Uh. So I'll take 9.81 times 3.5 uh, minus 5 times 0 0.5. So here I get friction is exactly the same value. So this is what I mean by check answer. Uh. The beauty about physics is that if you're applying the law appropriately, definitely you will get two same answers. Okay. If one of these is not the same, meaning there's a mistake somewhere, law, you can check for your errors. All right. This is pretty basic mechanics stuff. So I think that's all for this video. Please go try some examples and I will see you in the next one. Take care now.